you can be seated. Thank you all for leading us in worship. We don't take them for granted. Boy, I'm glad to see you all this morning. I, I honestly thought there would be fewer of you here today because of the weather. Uh, so Lord, forgive me for my lack of faith. But I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad for those who are watching uh, by way of online uh, offerings of the worship service. Uh, that continues to be a, a blessing, and uh, we're glad to be able to be in that realm as well. But it's so good to have people in the room. Amen? And uh, last week, was we had a, a really good number in attendance here in the sanctuary. And uh, I'm thankful for the way God has blessed us and that we have continued to come back after the days of, of COVID. And uh, this is a heartfelt invitation to those who are online and have been online for a long time, if you can come to the house, uh, please come and be in this number and let us love on you and hug, hug your neck and, and re be reacquainted in those ways. But we're glad to have this time together. Typically, at the beginning of the year, at least for several years, I have encouraged us to have a word for the year or a verse for the year. 
and a number of you have participated in that, and God has used it as a blessing in our lives. Well, here we are, we're, what, the fourth uh, uh, Sunday, I think, of, of uh, January, third or fourth Sunday of January, and I hadn't gotten around to that yet, but I want to get there today, and I want to encourage you um, to begin to pray about what verse or what word the Lord would have you to adopt, and maybe some of you have already done that. Um, but it, it is a way for us to, to kind of focus and listen for what God is wanting to say to us as we journey through our year. Uh, I remember a, a number of words and verses that I've adopted through the years. Uh, but this year, the word that God has put in my heart is the word better. And I talked about that a little bit last week, and I want to kind of follow up on that. Because I really sense in my life, and I, and I sense even in the church, in our collective experience as a church family, that God is leading us to a newness, if you will. Tony mentioned this morning um, the, the topic of revival, which means that life is brought to, to full again in our experience. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Y'all pray for a second. Jesus said in Matthew 17 that he who gives a cup of water in Jesus' name will not lose his reward. <clears throat> so thank you. But I, I believe God is, is leading me um, to a newness that he is wanting me to experience. Uh, a sense of his presence in my life. Uh, a faith that believes that that there is still more out there than there is back there. Um, man, I, I pray that we see that, that what God has done is amazing, but it is a sampling of what he might do as we continue to hold to him by faith and follow where he's leading us. And so I want, I want to challenge you to, to ask the Lord, Lord, give me a word for 2023. Give, give me a rallying uh, point. Give, give me a flag to follow. Give me something, Lord, that will help me to understand specifically how you're wanting to work in my life to take those next steps on my journey with you. Because after all, the Christian life is a journey, a journey of faith as we come alongside Christ and allow him to have his perfect way in our lives. Now, please understand, better is not perfect, it's better. Uh, it means that as good as life is, there's more to experience because of the blessing that God is wanting to pour out in my life. Now, that might not be your word, but I'm just using as an example something that we can rally to. A couple of years ago, God gave me Psalm 23, 6, which says, Surely, um, I just lost it. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And God was reminding me two years ago when that was my, my verse for the year that he was with me and that he had something for me that is beyond the here and now. And it became, it became a real flag for me to follow spiritually. Um, one of the things that God has really been impressing upon my heart and mind is that there are new steps to take and there are new victories to experience as I give myself to this relationship that he's called me to. Y'all, 50, almost 53 years ago, I accepted Christ as my Savior for the first time. Um, 53 years of following him. And if, if we're not intentional, those of us who've been following for a little while, even those who've been following just just it's a new experience for you if we're not intentional about looking for him and hearing him we can miss our opportunity to move further along in our walk with Christ as a matter of fact Paul wrote to the Corinthian church and he said I'm giving you the milk of the word because you're not ready for meat and he's challenging them because he says, it, you've been walking with him long enough, you ought to want solid food. And he's challenging them to move beyond the beginnings of their association with Christ. And it's so important for us to continue to make those steps that God is calling us to make in order that we might experience the victories and the fullness that he is wanting to bring to our lives. So this week I'm reading 
through the scriptures and, and I came to uh, Philippians, the third chapter, and it's not a new passage by, by any stretch of the imagination, but it was highlighted in my heart this week. It, it was made new, if you will, in, in, in my uh, spirit this week as I read these words. And I, I'm reading it not from the NIV, but f from one of the other English versions. And listen to this, Philippians 3, beginning with verse 8. Nothing is as wonderful as knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Can you say amen to that? Nothing is as wonderful as knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. I, Paul says, I have given up everything else and count it all as garbage. All I want is Christ. And to know that I belong to him, I could not make myself acceptable to God by obeying the law of Moses. God accepted me simply because of my faith in Christ. And so what he's saying is back in his days as a Pharisee, before he experienced the presence of Christ and the saving light of Christ in his life on the road to Damascus, Paul says, back when I was a, a, a servant to the law of God, the law could not save me. I was as lost as in the beginning of knowing the law. It did not make me a better man. That's what Paul's saying. It did not change my heart toward God. It did not change my fellowship with my fellow man. It did not make me a better person by far. But he says, God, through Christ, brought me to that, that newness that I longed for. All I want to know is Christ and the power that raised him to life. I want to suffer and die as he did, so that somehow I also may be raised to life. I have not yet reached my goal, and I am not perfect, but Christ has taken hold of me, so I keep on running and struggling to take hold of the prize. My friends, I don't feel I have already arrived, but I forget what is behind, and I struggle for what is ahead. I run toward the goal so I can win the prize of being called to heaven. This is the prize God offers because of what Christ Jesus has done. You know, we're all on our way to heaven. And a lot of questions will be answered when we step from this side to the other side of eternity. And when I say all of us are on our way to heaven, I mean by that those who have opened their hearts to Jesus Christ and have accepted his, his grace that was poured out on the cross that day that he offered himself as our salvation. As we place our faith in him, we have the assurance, blessed assurance, we sang this morning, that we're on our way to that heaven that he's prepared for us. If you're here today and you're, you don't have that blessed assurance, you could have it before you leave here. Because the truth of the gospel is when we hear the truth and God calls us to the cross, to the, to the sacrifice that was made for us, the Bible says that if we confess our sins and humble ourselves before him and repent of our sin and, and say to God, I want Jesus in my life. I want him to be the prize of my existence, that Jesus brings his forgiveness and his fulfillment to our lives. And so as the Holy Spirit draws us to the cross, drew me 52 years ago to the cross, and I knelt down at an altar just like one of these and said, I want Jesus to forgive me and to become my Savior. And he moved in and changed everything about my life. For 52 years, I have been taking next steps to know him better, to surrender to him more fully, to, to understand that my life is not about the accumulation of earthly prizes, but that my life is about gaining that heavenly prize that has been prepared for me in the great beyond. You see, the truth is we were created to be forever in the presence of God. And so if we go any other way, it's at our own choosing. It's not the plan of God for our lives. And so I've been, I've been listening to the Lord. I've asked him, Lord, please help my life to be better. Thank you for how good your blessings have been in my experience. But Lord, help me not to live on yesterday's manna. Lord, help me to expect that today you're wanting to bring your newness and your salvation and your miraculous touch to my life all over again. So all week I've been saying, Lord, I want my life to be better. Help me, Lord. Help me to take those next steps that my mind might be transformed, that my body might be sanctified that my existence might be godly in your sight, that I might be about you and about what you have for me. So I want to take those steps. 
I made a little acrostic this week, and I want to share that with you. What does it mean to take a step? Well, it's defined in the passage I read for you, so let me just share this with you. As a matter of fact, you might, and I don't say this often, but, but I really believe the Lord gave this to me, and you might want to just type this in notes on your phone or take out a piece of paper and a pencil. Um, I, want you to, I want you to consider this acrostic because I really believe it's something the Lord gave me, and I think it's something that can be beneficial to all of us um, because it's, it's a parameter. It's, it's, not, it, it's not that God's going to lead you to take exactly the same steps that he's going to lead me to take, but it does define that there is a, there is a, there is a, a Godward path that he would have all of us to take, and this Godward path can be outlined a little bit in this simple acrostic. I'm using the word step, S-T-E-P, S to see what God wants. To see what God wants is the beginning of our being on this journey to take hold of Christ who has taken hold of us. Now, in order for us to see what God has for us, there, there's intention involved, right? We have to be on the lookout. We have to be looking for um, what it is that God is wanting to show us. Now, I, I tell you, the other, the other day, a couple weeks ago, uh, there was a water line that goes underground and then it, it comes out of, of the ground and goes toward the pond and it's connected to a pump that pumps water into the pond. And the pond is low again. I mean, it is so low. And um, so I, I decided, well, I need to turn the pump on and went out there and there was a, a repair that needed to be made. And so I gathered the supplies and... and, um, and the pipe, the glue, and what have you, and I, I get it all put together, and I'm down next to the pond, and when I'm down next to the pond putting in that little section of pipe, just PVC pipe, but as I'm putting that section in, I remembered that months ago when we were trekking through the woods and the trees were all still there, that um, Matt Parrott came walking, I think it was Matt, that came walking up with an egg in his hand, and he said, look what I found. And we're like, that's too big to be a goose egg. It's definitely not a chicken egg. I mean, this egg's about, about like this, and it's kind of a bluish color with some speckles on it. And, and so somebody, and it might have been Eric, I can't remember who it was, about four or five of us, Bill was there, a, a number of us were there, and uh, somebody said, it might be an alligator egg. I said, well, you know what, I'm going to do what I tell everybody to do. I'm going to Google that thing. And I Googled alligator egg, and y'all, it was dead on. It, if, it, if it were not an alligator egg, um, I'll eat my hat. I believe it was an alligator. So I'm down there putting that section of pipe in, and I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute. Where there's an alligator egg, there's a, I'm, I'm telling you. And I thought, I'm not looking for an alligator, but if an alligator's out here, he's looking for me. And so I became very intentional. And rather than having my back to the, to the pond and the, and the bank that went on down to the water, I'm very watchful as I'm gluing this last piece of pipe in place. And I think, I'm thinking, you know, it's too cold for the snakes to be crawling, but come on, in South Carolina, you can get summer in the middle of winter. And I'm thinking, what, if I'm confused about the weather, I think a snake could be confused about the weather. What do you think? And so I'm, I'm on the lookout now intentional about not being taken by surprise. Paul is saying in this passage in Philippians, he's saying, I am intentionally looking for the opportunity that God is giving me to take a better hold of Jesus as he takes hold of me. See what God wants. I want to see what God wants for my life. And so every day I need to, I need to be focused. I, I, I need to be sensitive. I need to be looking for the ways that God is wanting to reveal his, his will in my experience. Now, folks, his will, there's a piece of his will that is, that is general in nature that's true for all of us. But then God has a personal relationship with, with us. Jesus said it in, in John 10. Um, I know my sheep, 
and they know me, and they hear my voice. And so God knows each and every one of us and calls us by name. The Bible says he has written our names in the palm of his hand. God knows us. And so if, if you and I become intentional about what it is that God is wanting to show us, I promise you that is not foolishness. That is not in vain. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And fear there properly interpreted is not, is not afraid. It is he who respects the presence of God in his life will have the wisdom that God has prepared for him or her. The S in step, I want to see what God has for me. Not just when that day comes that I cross over into glory, I want to know today. As much as he wants me to know, how much he wants to reveal, that's what I want to take hold of. Revelation is progressive. He's not going to give us the whole load of truth in any given moment. But step by step, Lord, I want to see what you want me to see. And Lord, I want to pursue that, and I want to pursue that as a matter of intention, on purpose. I want to see what you have for me. And then T, Lord, when you show me, then I want to trust you, even if what you have shown me doesn't make sense to me in the moment. Think about the times in your life that God has led you to move in a direction and you thought, man, why in the world, Lord, will you not let me free of this? Why, why, why am I, every time I think about anything, I think about moving in that direction that you have shown me. But it doesn't make any sense to me, Lord. The T in step is to trust him, even when you don't understand him. That's faith. Faith moves in the direction of God and where he is leading, even if it seems contrary to everything else that has been revealed up to that point. There comes a time when you have to have a faith boldness that will allow you to move in a direction that you would not have chosen as a matter of your own reason. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, and he will direct your paths. Some of us are not experiencing the glory of what he is showing us because we refuse to move in that direction. And sometimes it's because we're afraid, and sometimes it's because we stubbornly don't want to let go of what we have to let go of in order to take that step. I've told you the story before, but just a brief snippet from that story. The time that I was a young kid stuck in a treehouse and screamed for help, and Dad came to rescue me, my foot could not reach that first step. And I, because of where I was, I couldn't see the step. I knew it was there, but I couldn't reach it. I couldn't feel it. I couldn't see it. My dad climbed up the ladder, and he said, all right, just let go. Let go. But it made sense because he was there to guide me. And somebody here today is being called to let go of what you've been clinging to because it's keeping you from the glory of what he has shown you. It's one thing to see it. It's another thing to experience it. S. Lord, I want to see what you want me to see, and I want to trust what I can't understand. And then E, Paul says, knowing Jesus Christ is the most wonderful thing that has ever happened in my life, and everything else compared to that is garbage. And there's some garbage that needs to be tossed from your life today. The E is for emptying ourselves. Of those things that are 
hindering us from experiencing the glory of what God has for us. And some things that God is calling us to let go of really takes faith. But always had a hand on that. It's always been a part of who you are. But you can't get away from it. God is saying, let go. Let go. Um, someone wrote this, prob probably a sailor. Ships are safe in the harbor, but that's not what they're built for. They're built for the open sea. There comes a time when you have to unmoor your vessel from what has made you feel so secure. So in terms of a, of a boat, a boat is tied to the dock, but the fish are over there across the lake. There's some challenges between here and there, but if you're to get where the fish are, you've got to untie from the safety of the dock. You've got to leave the pier. You've got to go out to the open water in order to catch the fish that are to be caught. And there are some things that God is calling all of us to, and he's saying, trust me, but he's also saying, let go of what you're holding to. Because as long as you hold to that, you can't take hold of the other. Man, God keeps bringing that to us. There's a reason for it. There's something that God has, has called us to. Not only as a church, but as individuals. There's something that He is calling us to, to move in that direction. But He says, in order for you to move in that direction, that has, that has to, to become more precious to you than anything else. It makes me think of the two parables that Jesus shared the pearl of great price, and the treasure in the field. And in the parable of the pearl of great price, he said a man found a pearl that was unlike any pearl he had ever seen before. And he thought, I've got to have that pearl. But in order for me to have that pearl, I'm going to have to sell all of my other holdings in order to have what is necessary to purchase this pearl. And so he says, I'm going to sell everything I have that I can have that pearl. You hear what Jesus is talking about, don't you? The scripture says, you can't have the world and have Jesus too. There comes a time when we have to make a decision. There comes a time when we have to empty ourselves of everything else in order that we might have that. And then the field, the treasure in the field, same kind of parable. Jesus said a man went out. And he was looking to uh, increase his real estate holdings. And he found this field and he thought, that's a good looking field. I, I wouldn't mind adding that to my holdings. And he went out and in the midst of that field, he found a treasure. It doesn't say what the treasure was, but he found a treasure. And I don't know about you, but I go to back, back to my childhood and I think about that pirate's chest that is buried somewhere. And you open it up and it's full of gold and gems and and money and all kinds of valuable art, articles and artifacts. And, and the guy sees the treasure and it says he hid it. And he went back and liquidated all of his assets, liquidated all of his holdings because he wanted to buy this field because in this field there was a treasure like nothing he had ever seen before. The kingdom of God is forever the kingdoms of this world are but for a moment. The kings who thought they would reign forevermore are scattered in graves here, there, and yonder. There's only one king who has forever defeated death, and his name is Jesus. And he is the pearl of great price, and he is the treasure in the midst of the field. And Paul says to the Philippian believers, I have decided to let go of everything else. It is garbage compared to who Jesus is. Now, he doesn't mean that it's all garbage, but he says by comparison, there's no comparison. And I will give up everything in order to take hold of the one who has taken hold of me. And I've got to tell you, I want that passion for myself, the passion Paul had. 
I, I want to see everything else as trash, as garbage, as something to be thrown on the heap in order to take hold of Jesus more firmly as he is stretching his hand toward me. So E in step is empty yourselves of whatever is becoming a hindrance in following where God is leading you. And then P is proceed. Once you see it, once you trust God for it, once you let go of all other hindrances, now move, move. Don't stay still. Listen, if you're not moving forward in your relationship with Jesus, then you're starting to backslide. There's no such thing as staying put. There's no such thing as status quo in the Christian faith. Either you're going with Him or you're falling away from Him. I want to proceed. I am, I am thankful for everything I have experienced in these 50 years, 50, almost 53 years of following Jesus. 44 years of full-time pastoral ministry. What in the world could possess me to think that there's still more out there? The answer is simply this. God is amazing. And in God, there's always more than there has been. What has been is glorious. But he doesn't want us to camp out in those places where he has revealed himself. You want an example from Scripture? Peter, James, and John went on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus and said, hey, this is glorious. This is glorious. Here is Jesus and Moses and Elijah. The law, the prophets, and grace are represented on that mountain of transfiguration. And Peter says, I know. Let's build some tents and let's camp out here. And Jesus said, oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to camp out here. We're going to take what you have been shown here and apply it to all of your tomorrows that you might remember that what God is up to in your lives is complete. Jesus said, I have not come to abolish the law, but I have come that the law might be fulfilled. What God has for us, <laughs> this is hard to even say. What God has for us is greater than anything we've experienced yet. Because he's never done pouring out his glory in our experience. If we cling to yesterday, we're going to miss tomorrow. We're going to miss the grandness of what God is leading us to next. And Paul says everything, even his past experiences of walking with Christ, everything behind me, I'm leaving behind me that I might take hold of what is before me, what God has for me. Nothing is as wonderful as knowing Jesus Christ my Lord. Paul says, I have given up everything else and count it as all garbage. All I want. All I want. All I want is Christ and to know that I belong to him. And so when I say my word for 2023 is better, what I'm saying is thank you for all the good stuff, all the great stuff that you have done in my life, that you have shown me in my lifetime, that you have allowed me to be a part of in the days gone by. But Lord, I want tomorrow to be better than yesterday. Lord, I, I want you to have your way with me. I'll never be perfect, but I can be better. Whatever is holding me back, I let go of today. And I'll do that again tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day. Letting go of what has been in order to experience what he has for me next. What is your next step? 
Has your Christian life become like a treadmill? You're busy, 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 but going nowhere? Are you ready for something new? Then I invite you to pray with me today. Lord, don't let my yesterdays keep me from my tomorrows. Don't let me become a routine. Help me to be that dynamic person you created me to be. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Y'all, I still can't get over the, the new neural pathways. That if we intentionally set our course to thinking about life differently, we will become different. They've proven it scientifically. Which means, if there's an old habit that continues to dog you, you can be set free of that. You can. You can begin to think differently about life. About what is the pearl of great price. What is the treasure in the midst of the field. Paul... And I close with this thought. Paul showed us something in this passage of Scripture that is crucial for any disciple of Jesus. Being a disciple of Jesus is not a passive thing where you say, God, just have your way with me. It is an active pursuit of what God has chosen for us. Which means you've got to get up off the couch, spiritually speaking, and you've got to get involved in seeing, trusting, emptying, and proceeding. There are steps that God wants you to take in 2023 that no one else can take for you. The preacher can't do it for you. Your Sunday school teacher can't do it for you. Your spouse can't do it for you. Your friends can't do it for you. There are some things you are just going to have to do for yourself. And you can. Will you? There's the deal. It's not that we're not able. It's a matter of willingness. Do you want to know Jesus better? Not facts about him, but relationship with him. Better. That's my word. What's your word? What's your verse? My word's better. And I guess my verse would be, everything else is garbage compared to Jesus. Better. Better. Moving, stepping, the status quo will kill you. It'll steal your joy. It'll keep you from momentum. It'll keep you from the revival Tony mentioned in the beginning of, of the service. Better. Better. Moving. Stepping. Seeing, trusting, emptying, proceeding. Lord, what are you showing each of us about what you have for us? We are so many different people with so many different aspects of life represented in who we are. One person comes from one place geographically and another person comes from another place. One person has this religious background. Another one has the other. Some come from Christian homes. All they've known is going to church and reading the Bible. And others, this is a brand new, a brand new experience. But Lord, whoever we are and wherever we come from, here we are in your presence.
and you are the God who has a treasure in the field for each one of us. Help us to see it. And help us to take hold of it. Whatever that means for each and every one of us. There's nothing better than knowing Jesus. My soul says amen to those words of the Apostle Paul in Philippians 3. There's nothing better than knowing Jesus, my Savior. Nothing better. I give you my all that today, Lord, all over again, as though it were the very first time of surrender. I give my heart, my life to you. Give me the courage to let go and move on. In Jesus' name, amen. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, the treasures of fame, never
Nothing is better than 